Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kairos Time, and it's time to brawl. I wanted to do a tier list after the most recent update, but I'm guessing that Supercell is going to do some sort of balance changes after they release Club Leagues, which are coming soon, according to a recent tweet by them. So instead, we're going to talk about the best brawler for every rarity in the game. Now I'm going to be focusing strictly on the competitive meta, meaning pretty much Power League. That's the competitive meta, pretty much. <laughs> and we're starting off with the Trophy Road brawlers, namely Brock, who isn't actually the best. He is our runner-up. I'm also going to cover the runner-up, okay? Now, before a recent nerf, Brock wasn't just the best trophy road brawler, he was debatably the best brawler in the game. Even though his main attack is noticeably easier to dodge, the blast radius from each of his rockets is still huge and provides a lot of control. Now, his first star power also adds control, and it can make a significant difference in heist because obviously the high safe can't run away from the flames left on the ground, so it just takes all of that damage. Another reason that Brock is so good is just because of how much he can change the map. Brock can straight up ruin entire enemy strategies. They go throwers, you play Brock, you break the walls, the throwers are useless. This is true with his super, his rocket fuel gadget equipped to his regular attack, you name it, he's going to break the walls and make the map better for him and his teammates. This also includes widening the goal in Brawl Ball, which can be incredibly useful. He may not be picked or banned as much as he used to be, but Brock definitely still has his place in Bounty and Heist, and also certain maps for other modes. But the best trophy road brawler has got to be Stu right now. And this is not the first time that he's been on one of my lists as one of the best. Stu is incredibly evasive, and he excels in 1v1 situations, especially when he's fighting somebody else within his range. His main attack is easy to hit, it instantly charges his super, deals a solid amount of damage, and both of his gadgets are incredibly useful. Breakthrough helps him counter throwers, and his speed zone gadget helps his entire team for the entire match get closer to the middle of the map after they respawn, because no enemy is going to try and risk going that far back to their spawn. And honestly, Stu is pretty much useful in every game mode. Even on maps that favor long-range brawlers, if Stu can move up to the map where he can just land one projectile on a long-range brawler. He's then able to approach them, and with enough skill, he's a solid option against every brawler in the game, pretty much. By the way, some honorable mentions to some other Trophy Road brawlers that I consider for this list. That's going to be Tick and 8-Bit. But next, we have the Rare Brawlers, and honestly, there aren't really a lot of Rare Brawlers. There's only four of them, and they're not really amazing in Power League right now, but I did go with Poco as the second best. To be clear, I think Byron is pretty much an all-around better healer right now, but if Byron is taken by your team or the enemy team and you need a healer, Poco is a really solid choice. He's especially good on hot zone maps with a single zone to control because he can keep himself alive for a long time and keep his teammates alive, which honestly is pretty much the only objective on hot zone, right? He also controls zones very well for how wide his attack is. And then we also have the Poco double tank combo, which is really popular because it's probably the best you'll ever use in Brawl Ball but you'll probably never see it in solo power league and maybe even a once in a while you'll actually end up facing it in team power league sorry my voice is shot. I'm recovering from a bit of a cold. Now, the best rare brawler would have to be Barley. He's not picked consistently, but on certain maps, he's kind of a must-have or even a must-ban brawler. He's not even really the best thrower right now, but certain maps in Brawl Ball, Heist, and Hot Zone that really hinge on map control, like Hot Potato or Super Stadium, really make him very strong, especially if the enemy team does not have a thrower. And this is because he does such a good job at controlling the map. Now, on top of that, we have both of his gadgets, which are really awesome for his team. Then we have his extra noxious star power, which is especially great in high since it helps them deal so much damage against targets that don't move. Once again, that's safe. It can't run away, so it just takes so much damage from his attacks. So just to be clear, Barley is much more about the map that you're playing rather than the specific game mode, and you might not see him as much as some other brawlers on this video, but he is definitely the best out of the rare brawlers. And up next to the super rare brawlers, and although there are only five of them, with the exception of the strongest, it was actually really hard to pick which one was second best. But thanks to her recent buffs, I decided to go with Jackie. Jackie has a lot of health and can deal lots of damage with her main attack, especially if there are multiple enemies bunched up. And her second star power basically gives her more health, except it's with a shield, which is actually better than just having more health. So even though Jackie has a very short range, she has pretty much everything she needs in order to move up on the map so she can force enemies back, or even to expose themselves so that she, they can get hit by your teammates. And for those situations, her speed boost gadget is actually really great for that. And even though her super doesn't deal any damage, any super that has a pulling effect is extremely powerful, and it's much better than it used to be. Now, since she's certainly a more aggressive brawler, I think her best game mode is Brawl Ball, but if she has a good healer on her team, she can honestly be used in almost any of the game modes, including Bounty. Like a Jackie with a Byron to back her up is like really hard to take out. But without a doubt, the best super rare brawler right now for the competitive meta is Rico. Similar to Barley, Rico's a lot more dependent on the map than the game mode that he's actually playing.
thing. That being said, Rico's actually more useful on a lot more maps than Barley actually is. And if there is a map with lots of walls for him to bounce his shots off of, he is amazing right now. His extra bouncy star power boosts his attack damage so much that it really doesn't matter how much health you have, you're gonna lose it really quickly. And even if you play around an enemy Rico very well and get close enough to actually hit him, his bouncy castle gadget will not only fully recover his health, but as long as those balls are still bouncing, they keep his health full even if he's taking damage. All it takes is one bounce for his range to be increased enough to match pretty much the range of any brawler, and his super can be game-changing if you line it up correctly, especially if the enemy is in a narrow spot where it's really hard for them to dodge your shot. Rico is arguably the hardest brawler to play around unless you have a specific answer to him, which is why he's the best out of the super rare brawlers. Now, unlike the super rare brawlers, there are actually a lot of pretty good epic brawlers, so it was kind of hard to choose, but I went with Griff for the second best, the runner-up for Epic Brawlers. Just like Brock, Griff has a gadget that can help him destroy walls without the need of his super, and blowing up walls is usually a great thing for Griff to do because his super range is very wide and it's easiest to use in areas that are really open. It's, it's impossible for enemies to dodge it if they're within his range. Not only does his super deal tons of damage over a large area, but his main attack even has some width to it as well. This is why Griff is great for hot zone and even brawl ball, especially if it's overtime and there's nowhere for him to hide. Now, while Griff is a fantastic brawler at mid range combat, he doesn't quite have the range or utility to be a good pick for like bounty or heist. But Piper, who I'm listing as the best out of the epic brawlers, is pretty much viable everywhere. At least for the Power League maps right now, where they're pretty much all wide open and really favor long range brawlers. And that's why I picked her as the best epic brawler competitively. She has one of the longest range attacks in the game, and unless the enemy is right next to her, she deals massive damage with each shot. Now, because so many meta brawlers don't have very much health right now, Piper can take out most brawlers she faces with just two shots, and with the help of her homemade recipe gadget, it can be really easy to take them out if you just happen to hit one regular shot before you actually activate her gadget. Her super can get out of scary situations, which makes her good for carrying gems or holding a high bounty, and it also blows up walls, which can be really useful in Brawl Ball as well. She's pretty much your basic sniper character, but those are always really great to have right now. Now, other honorable mentions for the epic rarity brawlers are Pam, Nani, and B, who are actually pretty competitive at the moment. Now, for the mythic rarity, it was even harder to choose from because there are a lot of really amazing mythic brawlers right now. But I decided to go with Sprout for the second best mythic brawler right now. Sprout easily has the range it needs to do well in any game mode, including bounty. And being a thrower is usually an advantage by itself, but its main attack has a large blast radius, deals a good amount of damage, and can bounce off of walls, not to mention the fact that it can create walls. Now, depending on the map that you're playing, its super can completely shut down certain brawlers and strategies, and it can even block the goal in Brawl Ball. Sprout's star powers and gadgets are all very good, and you really can't go wrong with its build, just as long as you make sure there are actually bushes on the map when you're using photosynthesis. But the best mythic brawler right now is Byron. It does not matter what game mode you are playing, there is a spot for Byron on your team. He has great range so he can deal with other long range brawlers, and he can heal his teammates a ton. In fact, he makes a lot of bulky brawlers that aren't actually competitive right now very competitive because he can help keep them alive in situations where they would normally die. His super can instantly turn things around in close range combat by dealing lots of damage to an enemy and healing himself and nearby teammates in a split second, and he's just really good right now. Now, it's easier to get most out of Byron's attacks than most other brawlers because you're very rarely at full ammo, right? If you are at full ammo and you can't hit an enemy brawler, just use a shot on one of your teammates to heal them or keep them alive so that they actually win against their enemy. He can even use a spare ammo to heal himself by using his gadget, and that is exactly why Byron is a top tier pick in the competitive meta right now. Now, other honorable mentions in the mythic rarity include Jean, Mortis, and Terra. Now we have the legendary brawlers. Not all legendary brawlers are actually legendary because they're good. It's usually because they're unique. But two legendary brawlers really stood out above the others. Now, I chose Spike as the second best legendary brawler in the competitive meta right now. He's very hard to avoid at long range, and he deals massive damage at close range, so it's really an uphill battle fighting Spike anywhere. His curveball star power makes it way harder to dodge his main attack, and although really skilled players will have practiced dodging this pattern, it's still really hard to avoid. Also, his life plant gadget pretty much guarantees that he's going to win 1v1s if he's facing a brawler that can't shoot through it. His super is really good for area control, it makes it easier for his whole team to hit enemies that get caught within it, and all of his abilities working, working together 
even with his little health, still make up for a really strong brawler pretty much in any of the game modes right now. With, of course, the exception of Bounty, which he's not as competitive for right now. But other than that, he's a solid pick, especially if the enemy team picks some sort of tank. But the best legendary brawler right now has got to be Sandy. Sandy doesn't really have the range for Bounty, but he's an absolute beast in every other game mode right now. He might actually have the best, most useful super in the entire game with either of his star powers equipped. And on top of that, he has one of the fastest unload speeds in the game, which actually pairs really well with his attack because it can pierce through targets and take out multiple enemies at once. Sandy's new gadget is also great because it helps him win more 1v1s and also gives his teammates a little extra time to zone in on the target and it counters a lot of enemy abilities that normally he would struggle against. Also, don't forget the fact that he has an above average movement speed. This is a small detail that often goes unaccounted for, but makes a huge difference because it's so much easier for him to get around the map and avoid getting hit. Now, the only other legendary brawler I wanted to give an honorable mention to is Leon for the competitive meta right now. He's actually pretty good still. But next we have chromatic brawlers, starting off with our runner-up, Buzz. Buzz is the second best chromatic brawler. While he's still technically considered a close range brawler, his super allows him to deal with even the longest range brawlers in the game. He does require a little bit more extra patience to play him correctly and actually win with him, but depending on how far away he hits someone with his super, he can usually take them out all by himself pretty easily. And that's especially true if he happens to hit more than one target with his super, because then he will recharge his super twice as fast, and he can usually stun the same two brawlers again before they escape the first stun. Now, while other brawlers have their time and place in Power League, Buzz is a good pick for any game mode and almost any map. Now, Bounty and Gem Grab can be a little bit riskier to play him with because he's typically a brawler that actually defeats enemies on their side of the map, but with the help of his gadget, he can get out of some sketchy situations, which makes him still pretty playable in these game modes. I think the reason that Buzz gets second place instead of first is the fact that there are very few brawlers that can counter his super pretty well with their abilities. But there is one brawler who I would still consider to be better than Buzz, and that is Bell for the chromatic rarity. Bell has consistently been one of the best brawlers in the game since the day she was released. She has enough range to compete with pretty much any brawler, and she hits pretty hard from any range. Her projectile speed is fast compared to other long range brawlers like Brock and even Piper, which actually helps her hit shots further away and more consistently, and it also increases the range at which she can safely auto fire her ammo to actually hit a target. Now her gadget is also extremely useful for not just herself, but her teammates as well, because anybody that gets hit by that, they are, they are marked. They are going to die, right? Bell's also a pretty good pick in all five game modes and almost every map, including Heist, just because of how much control her bounce attack can provide. She takes out most smaller brawlers with two or three shots, and she can even handle tanky brawlers by tagging them with her super. Her first star power is also really useful, especially when dealing with close range brawlers, but that shield that she gets from hitting enemies even helps a lot when she's facing long range brawlers as well. It just helps her survive more shots, which actually throws a lot of enemies off. Now, I also wanted to mention Ash as an honorable mention for chromatic brawlers. And even though she's not out right now, I think that Lola is going to be really strong. In fact, she might be the strongest brawler in the game at first. And there you have it, the strongest brawler and runner up for every rarity in Brawl Stars right now. Let me know in the comment section if you disagree with any of my choices, or maybe you agree with them for the most part. You can let me know then too. It actually makes me feel pretty good. Thanks again for everyone's support and getting me past 800,000 subscribers. If you are not subscribed already, please press this button right here and you can actually watch more videos right there. I always have to look at my screen and make sure I'm pointing in the right places because it's actually mirrored for me. For now guys, this is Kairos. I'm ticking by and we will see you in the next Brawl Stars video, hopefully when my voice is a little bit better. <laughs>